I am the type of person that prefers working in a terminal over any other graphical user interface. To be more precise, web UIs or desktop applications are great when it comes to observability. I love Grafana, Kibana and other tools that help me visualize data. But when it comes to actual work, terminals are my weapon of choice. When I work, I do almost everything in Visual Studio Code, which is split into three screens. On the left side is File Explorer, where, you know, I browse files and directories. Alternatively, I might switch to GitHub Copilot chat, which, by the way, is replacing Google as my primary source of information. Editor, where I write code and docs and everything else worth writing is in the middle and terminal potentially the most important of the three is on the right. If you exclude a browser for Googling and Slack for messaging, that's it. That's all I have running on my computer while working. I write code in the editor and I run commands and interact with the system in the terminal on the right. Now, while pure terminal commands work great for most of the time, there are cases when I do need fields and buttons and navigation and other UI elements. However, I would like to have those things without leaving VS Code. In those cases, I have two options. I can try to find a more graphical solution in form of a VS Code extension, or I can use a terminal-based solution. For example, when I get tired of typing kubectl commands, I fire up K9S. For me, K9S is a perfect example of a terminal-based UI. It's an awesome example of a graphical user interface that runs in a terminal. K9S is a terminal-based application, and if you're not familiar with it, please check that video. Today, I want to explore ways to build such UIs. I want to talk about ways to create graphical user interfaces in a terminal and accomplish something similar to what K9S does. And to do that, there is no better place to start than Charm. Let's start from the beginning. What is Charm? Charm's tagline is that they make the command line glamorous. And that fits it really well. They really do make it glamorous. There are tools and libraries for quite a few use cases that involve terminals. We can use it to create interactive prompts, send emails, build terminal user interfaces, SSH applications, physics-based animations, and many more. When I need to do something in a terminal, Charm is always the first place I look for a solution. They're so dedicated to terminals that we can even execute something like ssh git.charm.sh to get the list of all their projects instead of going through a browser. I use Charm libraries and executables all the time, and I even explored one of them in that video. Today, however, I want to focus on something similar, yet completely different. You see, Charm Gum is an executable that allows us to enhance shell scripts with graphical user interfaces. That's great, in a pinch, but when we need to build something more serious, we probably want to turn to a programming language other than Bash. That's where Charm Bubble T comes into play. It is a library that allows us to build terminal-based applications in Go. It allows us to build something similar to K9S. Now, you might be thinking that I'm talking about some niche set of libraries and executables, but that's not the case. While Charm might not be a household name, it is used by quite a few companies. GitHub, uh, Microsoft, AWS, NVIDIA, GitLab, Kubernetes itself, DigitalOcean, and Shopify are only a few of many, many companies whose engineers use Charm. As a matter of fact, it might be one of the least known libraries that is used by people working in the most well-known companies. So, with Charm Bubble T, we can build amazing terminal-based applications, and that might lead you to think that's what I want to talk about, right? But that's not the case. You see, Charm Bubble T is amazing, and I used it in a few projects, but it is not the easiest library to use. So, today I want to start with something simple, yet amazing. 
Let's take a quick look at the terminal application I built for myself. It is the app I use to manage all my tasks related to production of videos like the one you're watching right now. So let's do go run dot. There are selects, inputs, confirmations, text fields, multiple selects, and even a spinner. As a side note, among other things, this application is connected to OpenAI. But since this video is not about AI, I will not go into details. But if you do think that would be interesting, all you have to do is let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to explore it in a future video. Now, there are quite a few things I used to build that application, but the one that matters, the one that allows me to build all those UI elements is Charm. Ha! Huh. By the way, I love Charm's logo and project names. Isn't ha? Huh. A refreshing change from typical boring names you normally see. Hmm? All in all, if you're working in a terminal and especially if you're DevOps or any other type of engineer that tries to create tools for other people in your company, I strongly suggest making something similar. Just as you can develop a web UI that can serve as the user interface of your internal developer platform, you can just as well create a terminal-based UI. Now, here comes a note that might feel you, make you feel frustrated at first and embarrassed later. To use Charm, ha, huh, you need to write code in Go. If that produced a reaction like, I strongly suggest to dive into Go. If you call yourself DevOps or SRE or something similar, Go is the language you should learn. It became standard for system level programming and it is used by almost all companies that are building tools for engineers. Heck, whole Kubernetes is written in Go and a significant number of CLI tools you normally use, you normally use, is also, are also written in Go. So if you were frustrated when you heard that Charm projects are focused on Go, change that frustration into embarrassment for not already writing code in Go. It is an easy language to learn and what I will show you today is as easy as it can get. Here's code from one of the screens of my application. First, I'm creating a new form. A form can have one or more groups. Inside each of the groups, we can have one or more elements. In this case, I have a number of input fields and two selects. The important part is the value function, which references a variable where the value of the element will be stored. Finally, I run the form, which is an operation that shows the form and waits for the user to interact with it. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's that easy. Now, to be clear, your code will not be only about showing forms and collecting data. You will have code that is not related to Charm. Charm, ha! allows you to create a user interface for your terminal-based application. The rest is up to you. Charm is awesome and I strongly suggest you to check it out. And if you're looking for a good starting point, Charm, ha, is a great place to start. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.